welcome to the video on why resolution testing is done with 6 units 12 units or 24 units mainly whenever you perform the resolution testing you need 6 units of the formulation these 6 units may be the tablets capsules or oral suspension doses and the dissolution testing starts with the minimum 6 units testing. If 6 units fails, then another 6 units are tested. And if the 12 unit data fails, then another 12 units are tested. So, so it becomes 24 units. So what is the reason? behind these 6 units is it a magic number or is it is having some reason then how the specifications are related to the number of doses or number of units and how the specification criteria is given on the basis of stages in the dissolution testing like S1 stage, S2 stage, S3 stage for IR formulations and L1, N2, L3 stage for ER type of formulations and similar to IR in the DR type of formulation following the acid phase and buffer phase. So, in this video we will see what is the reason behind using the 6 units or 12 units or 24 units and how these are related to the specifications so i request you to be with the video till the end so that you will have complete understanding about this topic and you can answer the question whenever it is asked See, dissolution is a performance test for the formulation. Dissolution is a in vitro test to have confidence onto the bioavailability and bioequivalence. Dissolution is a product specific test and different products are required to have the different dissolution testing conditions and the acceptance criteria. I have made many more videos on the dissolution topic. These are available on the channel in the dissolution playlist. So you can go there and watch those videos. And I know that after watching those videos, you will be having a good knowledge out of these topics. So units for the dissolution mean, means these may be the tablet capsule or unit dose of the suspension. So generally unit dose of the formulation is tested for the dissolution testing. Also see the 6 units are tested for the disintegration testing. So also this video will give you the answer why DT testing is done on to the 6 units. Mainly the video is for the dissolution testing. But it will also guide you for the reason behind using 6 units. Resolution results are required to be there for the batch release. Resolution results are very much important in the stability testing also. And generally, resolution is required to be done on to the 12 units. So, the regulatory authorities are insisting and the regulatory authorities are very concerned about the number of doses units and the batch release. See, this is because if you are making manufacturing a batch of 5, 5 lakhs batch size, 10 lakhs batch size units, and you are releasing the batch into the market based on only 6 units dissolution. 
so if six unit data is sufficient then some stringent criteria should be there regulatory authorities including the ICH countries and the other country regulatory authorities are insisting for the 12 units resolution data because if the number of units are increased then you will have good data you will have more confidence onto the batch performance or the product performance so generally resolution specifications are also to be set based on to the 12 units data and 12 units means s2 stage the units criteria is given in the usp as per this table so s1 stage is 6 units s2 stage is 6 units another 6 units means in s2 stage it will become total 12 units and in s3 stage fresh 12 units are to be taken so the data will become for the 24 units now the answer to the question that why dissolution testing is performed with 6 units so you may have different answers like pharmacopoeial requirements usp requirement or ip requirement bp requirement individual product monographs are there which are saying to perform the dissolution on 6 units or 12 units then you can answer like till now we are doing the standard practice by using 6 units at initial level so the reason is 6 units are required for having the minimum precision accuracy and statistical significance of the dissolution testing this is the main reason behind using the 6 units but 6 units if you use you will have 95% confidence interval for the data and this confidence interval and these terminologies are related to the statistical part so if you consider the number of units and the acceptance criteria you are using six units in the s1 stage you are having the less sample size or small sample size of six units so you need to have more confidence this example is for the immediate release type of formulation this you can relate to other type of formulations as well so if you have six unit data and you want to release the batch then the confidence then the acceptance criteria will be stringent that is q plus five percent release should be there for all the units if you go to S2 stage with 12 units and that is the minimum requirement here the sample size is 12 units it is satisfactory and it will give you more confidence onto the batch and this is the reason that minimum 12 units are required to be used for comparative dissolution profile study and for the F2 calculations like resolution similarity demonstration 12 units are used then if your resolution test fails or product fails at s2 stage then you have to move to s3 stage with another 12 units total units will become 24 units and then you will have some different criteria for the 24 units with let's say average of 24 units equal to or greater than q and not more than two units are less than q minus 15 percent and no unit is less than q minus 25 percent so this is the general criteria for s1 s2 s3 stage 
why I have related here the sample size and the acceptance criteria is uh, the reason is to make you understand about these terminologies and their interrelation. Then coming to the our basic part why six units are used. See in the dissolution testing the mean and standard deviation and a relative standard deviation are the main requirement or main parameters for the dissolution result evaluation and dissolution results acceptance and also for demonstrating the dissolution profile similarity. Mean and standard deviation of the dissolution testing represent the accuracy and precision of any statistically controlled stable process or method. So if these uh, mean and standard deviation, relative standard deviation are not within the specified ranges, then it can be understood that the product or the manufacturing process is not in the controlled state. Then coming to the process capability. So it is also referred as CP. See these all things are related to our dissolution testing and that's why I have included here. So be careful while you are understanding these things. Process capability is a statistical measurement of how well a process can produce a product that meets quality and quantity requirements. And for our pharma industry, a CP value of 1 indicates that a process is just barely capable and is meeting specifications but will still produce at least 3% defects. So CP value of 1 is minimum and it should be more than 1. Process capability of more than 1, sorry less than 1 indicates the process is not capable and produce a significant number of defects. If CP is equal to 1, that means the process is barely capable and produce 99.73% of output <coughs> within specification limits. CP value above 1 means the process is capable and produces 99.73% of output within specification limits. CP value above 1.33 means the process is highly capable and produces 99.99% of the output within specification limits. You can understand also that if the sample size is more or if the sample size is higher, then there will be less variability because this variability will be averaged out. Now process capability and number of units. So 6 unit means S1 stage. It follows CP is equal to 1. It gives you 6 sigma. Out of 6 sigma, 3 sigma will be there. Which indicate 99.73 population data will lie within the range. If you go to S2 stage, CP will be 2 and it will follow 6 sigma. It indicates 99.99% population data lie within the range. This is the reason behind using minimum 12 units of the sample for performing the dissolution test and having the confidence onto the batch onto the product and onto the dissolution results. So minimum is 6 for S1 stage, then S2 stage in all stable unit data, 
and S3 involves 24 units data. So always have understanding that twelve unit data is the minimum requirement, but six units can suffice the requirement for dissolution testing. I hope I hope that you might have got good idea about the number of doses units or number of units for dissolution testing and the reason behind those number of units thank you for watching the video